Welcome in all to the Society of Ordinary Gentlemen. I'm just an ordinary gentleman named Danny who also happens to be your host. So the other day I was hanging out with Flat Cat Piper and Senior Church Warden and Ghost Cobb and a few other people popped in. They were in the chats and on the live stream with us. We were testing out the live streaming setup for the awards show for Pipe Week. It's going to be a great time. There's a little a feature where you can kind of join in and be part of the audience and they're going to bring people on to both accept awards and do little little pieces for the pipe week awards it's going to be a great time so if you're not subscribed yet i'll leave mr flat cap piper's info right there in the description you can just click on it go over there get subscribed and when we were testing that out my camera came across as just a jet black background because it was pulling just my camera feed which is set up on a green screen so I think I found a way that I'll be able to use all of my cool effects and have it sent over as a webcam feed using a feature called virtual camera. So it'll allow us to do things like have my cool wooden backgrounds and smoke overlays and color changing logos. And there's quite a few different like effects and things I would like to have that are pipe week celebration specific. So I'm hoping all of that works well on the day of, but I can't be certain until it all actually works well, so wish me luck. Speaking of things going on in the community, a member of the Society of Ordinary Gentlemen and the YTPC, Mr. Truckin' Piper Bob, has got a giveaway going on for his 100 subs. He's asking for your favorite toy as a child, plus your, your first pipe, or I think your favorite pipe as well would do. And he said just make a video response or go over to his first video and leave him a nice comment telling him about it. And he'll enter you in the giveaway. So I don't know what my favorite toy was as a child. But I can tell you some stuff about about toys as a kid. So I was, I was bought an RC car one time. And I had owned it for about two hours at this point. And I had taken a screwdriver to it and taken it totally apart because I'm one of the people who likes to see how things work and if I can make improvements, make improvements. So I had taken this RC car apart into all the little pieces and then they walked in to see what I was doing and kind of freaked out because it was a it was a very nice RC car, very expensive. And I was like, I'm just figuring out how it works and I'm going to make it faster and then I'm going to put it back together. And they kind of were very upset about this. But to my credit, that RC car did go back together in its entirety. And it was faster than when I took it apart. So so that's something. Maybe, maybe I knew what I was doing. Or maybe I got lucky. Who knows? So there's another story that my grandmother loves to tell. And apparently as a toddler, they had bought me a little carpenter set. You know, like a Fisher Price plastic saw and hammer and... And screwdriver because I like to work with my grandfather around around the property there he was always working on a little project and apparently I was glued to his hip always wanting to do exactly what he was doing and help him work on things so they had gotten me this little plastic plastic set and she walked into the kitchen one day and I was standing next to my high chair with a little plastic screwdriver trying to tighten something up and apparently I couldn't get it to work and I was very intently looking at it and I threw the screwdriver down and I said well shit Shit, shit, shit. She looked at me and then looked over at my grandfather, kindly upset, and said, I wonder where he learned that from. My grandfather apparently smirked and said, I have no idea, and walked out. And, it, like, I can't even do the story justice the way I tell it, but when, when she tells it, it's just so, so perfect. So perfect. So that was some of the... The shenanigans I got into, apparently I, I enjoyed build blocks and tinkering with RC cars and things like that. As far as my hobbies now, as far as pipe smoking, my very first pipe and probably also my favorite is this Classy Apple. It's a Bones pipe from Mr. Chris Morgan. Uh, it's picked up quite a bit of color since I first got it. It's got the right kind of character to it. It is a tiger stripe over a quilt. And the entire base is nothing but bird's eye. It's just, it's a beautiful pipe. It's got a, a little T-shaped mark in it and uh, this face. 
the all the little dents and dings in the front kind of look like a face. And I just enjoy it. It's got the right kind of character. I chose a Bones pipe as my first pipe because I I wanted it to be an heirloom piece. And I wanted to choose something that was going to pick up all of that all of that character, all of the use over the years and just get better and, and better and better. So I went with a Bones pipe as my first pipe. I have since added another one to the collection, a gift from a good friend of mine. This is one of the uh, gnarly Bones pipes. It's got a lot of aggressive pitting on one side of it. Nothing that, of course, makes it unusable, but uh, it's just got that kind of gnarly chewed up side on the right hand side and there's a little bit up by the stem section on the tenon where it connects and there's a few little little pits and dents and dings on the side this one is completely unsmoked i have yet to figure out what i'm going to put in this so it's sitting around unsmoked uh, i'm thankful that it is when i popped around the shop today i talked myself out of buying a little nice little chimney number that i had my eye on by saying hey i have two at the house that aren't even broken in yet. We'll, we'll chill on the pipe acquisition disorder. Acquisition disorder for a moment and use the ones that we have. I did, however, get two new blends today, quite a bit different from the things that I was enjoying, those more aromatic sort of things, the lots of vanillas and flavorings and, and things like that. These are these are straying away from that, some quite heavily. Uh, I'm not going to share with you what they are in this video. We're going to save that for the Seller Project video. The Seller Project's coming along quite nicely. There are a few things that I need to fix with some of the, the, the logging side of things and how I'm doing my tasting notes and stuff. We're going to go over that in the Project Seller video. That'll be one of the next big main videos to come up. So if you're interested in kind of some technology work-ins and how I'm doing my seller and how I'm doing my tasting notes for reviews and everything, that'll be in the next video. So if you're interested, just go ahead and hit the subscribe button. That way you're already set up and you'll get a notification for it. Now the blends, I'll give you some hints at in case you want to guess in the comment section below. I got a Sutliff with, with a tang, Sutliff with a little bit of tang, and English from formerly Dunhill. Those are the clues I'll give you. I'll give you English from formerly Dunhill and Sutliff with a tang. And we'll see if you guys can guess it out in the comment section below. For project seller, we'll take a peek into the seller. I'll show you how to overly complicate what should be a very simple task. Share with you my review tasting notes methods and systems. And we might even pop open a fresh tin and enjoy the first smoke out of that new Burns pipe I showed you.